<laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Massimino, and this is Inside the International Space Station. Well, not really. But the ride coming home, I hear, is a, a lot different. You don't want to have your tongue between your teeth. Complete blizzard. Do you like that word? So now we're going to talk with uh, Joe Acaba and Sonny Williams about their upcoming space flight. What would you say the difference would be the launch experience? between the, the shuttle it, and the It is closer, and both, you're both right. inside and outside of the spaceship, let's say. I'd say it is closer, but the rocket's smaller. And so right. the impression for the sound and the noise, I think it's similar from yeah, what I you know, felt, that, that, that part of it. The big difference is I've only seen, what well, I kind of saw one. I was Dan Burbank's uh, backup, so I was out there in, in, a, those, blizzard. in a blizzard. Yeah. You know, the shuttle yeah. doesn't launch in really a blizzard. You not see anything. Right, right, you know. kind of saw. So I kind of saw it. I, I think it was out there. I saw this little bit of light, um, but that's a huge difference where a shuttle flight, you know, it's a nice day. I worked as a C squared down there. Yeah, you know, yeah. you have a little bit of wind. Okay, we're not going to fly today. Yeah. There's a lot of requirements. These guys, you know, up to like 60 mile an hour winds. It was a complete blizzard, yeah. and they launched. Yeah. And, uh, the That's funny part about it, that they didn't know probably, aside from people telling them it was a blizzard, because in the Soyuz you have a protective yeah. cover over you, so you can't see outside. Like yeah. in the shuttle, we got, you know, of course, windows there right. for everybody to see so they can fly it. But the Soyuz, you're just yeah. sitting in this encased little capsule, and people are telling you, it's freezing out here, yeah. it's blowing snow, <laughs> we can't even see you. It doesn't, <laughs> I think, doesn't I think even Dan matter. I that it was snow and I walked to the space. Yeah, we, we had to get on that. Yeah. 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 You know, he, he looked like a Snuggie. I guess. Yeah, he was all wrapped up. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah, he had that, you know, whatever, it looked like you know, a bunch of monks walking right. out. <laughs> I don't yeah. think though that was that, that's not to keep him warm though. I think they're warm. To protect the suit. The suit. It was. It was all the suit. It was just for the suit. Yeah, it was snowing. Yeah, yeah. He was walking through the <laughs> through the weather. So all right. So that it's a it's a bit. And how about on the on the you haven't been on the Soyuz yet either for this launch, but. What what are the major differences do you think you'll experience between a shuttle launch and a Soyuz launch? Or are they similar? One, one thing you mentioned, I guess you don't see you don't see very well on the. You well, don't have the big you don't, you know, you don't have the visual flight. outside visual picture at all. I, uh, from what we saw, right. we saw the saw the vehicle. Actually, we have both been in the vehicle when it's been under its cover. Mm -hmm. um, they because they put the rocket together only like three days before launch. It's pretty incredible, actually. We see the we see the vehicle about the actual Soyuz vehicle about uh, two weeks before launch, mm -hmm. and then they put it in its protective shroud, and they stand it upright, and we get to go in it when it's like that. And sit in your seat, which is pretty squishy. You know, uh, the shuttle is, you know, everybody has their chairs and they're sort of lined up, you know, all right next to each other. You turn around, you have a little bit of room to move around, even though it seems a little squishy. In the Soyuz, you are, it's me and Joe. Your right size here. would be like right in the center of us, and we'd be, we'd be all close together and snugged up together. So there, there isn't much room in there yeah. at all to move around, and your knees are a little bit up in your chest, like this as you're, you're sitting in the you chair. you that thing. Yeah. yeah. You'd, you'd have a good time. It would be hard, yeah. Like the rollout's pretty cool, you know. It's oh, just, talk about the rollout, yeah. The rollout of you know your vehicle, it's uh, it's like launch day minus two, you know, minus two days, okay. and it was neat as a backup. You get a chance to go out there and see it, and it's just early in the morning. This thing's coming on a little, you know, little train on the, you know the rails right there, and they roll it right up to the pad and hoist it up, and. Boom! It's ready to go. Yeah, yeah the, the shuttle's out there for months. You know, a good 30 days in advance, and it's sitting out there. And this thing, it's you know, if you go there three days before launch, you know, where's the launch pad? You, you don't yeah. see it. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see that. Difference. So is the the, car, the, the, the the railroad car is also the launch pad, so to speak. Pretty much, it rolls it out there, and then they you know have this mechanism where they just hoist it up and they put it on their launch pad. And, wow. Yeah. So it doesn't have all the support structure from what I've seen, like the shuttle has, right? And the shuttle had the, you know, we could have the different levels and the right. toilet and everything else you had up yeah. there. Yeah. You don't have all that support structure. It's, it's not quite as elaborate. Not as elaborate as that. Yeah. It's pretty elegant, though. It is. The, 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 the vehicle's actually... Meaning? Meaning it's just sitting on three pegs. It's right. just, it's hanging out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it launches and there's um, some... Support structures, yeah, just pretty yeah. much for like wind and stuff like that, because uh, they don't blizzards. want the, the vehicle's pretty tall. You know, we could talk about blizzards. what it looks like. Yeah, blizzards, <laughs> blizzards you know, just whatever. Something to hold it up. So yeah. just you know, <laughs> sort of to support yeah. it, just a little bit. But when the vehicle launches, and those are on weights, and when the vehicle launches and its thrust is greater than those weights, all the support structure just falls away because the thrust yeah. is bigger than the weights, and it just launches off of the three pegs that hold it there. 
So there's no pyro bolts that hold it, no mechanism that you have to worry about is going to fail. If the, yeah. if the main engines of the, of the Soyuz works, it's going. So that's sort of nice to know. Yeah, I'm elegant, I think, is a good way to describe it. Yeah. Do you like that word? I like it. It's elegant a lot. Like, okay, elegant to probably the people that are watching the Kardashians right now yeah. has one meaning. Right. But elegant to engineers has a different meaning. That's why I, I'm, I'm glad you used it. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Simplistic, yeah. Per very kind of clever, nice way to do things. Mm -hmm. the, the, the launch, the acceleration, and so on, is that, is that do you think that is going to be similar to what you experienced on shuttle I, or is it smoother or I don't know how would you describe it can you from describe video, your experience but, on the shuttle and what you expected I, well from video from inside the Soyuz because we also as backups we you were in the SAR, yes. SAR room yeah. right so we get to go where the search and rescue folks are because they're all lined up ready to go in case anything mm -hmm. happens and they have communications to all the assets downrange and inside there they had TV so you could see what's going on inside the capsule. And that's been like that since forever because they've al always want to know how the crew feels. This is a question that happens all the time. Yeah. How's the crew feeling? The crew's feeling fine. And they're watching you on video just to make sure everybody's okay. So as you're watching them, uh, it's really pretty smooth because it's a liquid rocket. Mm -hmm. And so there's, it's not a, a bunch of vibrations yeah, the, yeah, until, until the staging happens. And then yeah. you can really see people bounce around when the yeah. staging happens. But the profile is, I think, pretty similar. You know, yeah. you do the center fuse training out there like you do for a okay. shuttle flight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so going uphill, it seemed, you know, pretty much pretty the same. Yeah. And G-Force and all that. And, but the ride coming home, I hear, is a, a lot different uh, <laughs> on the Soyuz as compared to the, you know, the shuttle. It's like you're coming back on a nice jet liner and it's smooth and everything's good. You're happy to be home. And, yeah. well, Soyuz is a little it's different. A, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> if you ever hear some of the audio from a Soyuz landing from inside the capsule, it's uh, not pretty. So it's going to be rough, on, uh, is what you're, the big boom at yeah. the end? But there's a couple things, I think, when the parachute comes out. Yeah. And, the, you yeah. know, the vehicle's coming in, and then the parachute, you know, rips out from one side, and it's going to jerk the vehicle around. And then the second part of the parachute mm -hmm. actually realigns itself, because you come down under, like, the vehicle, only one, <coughs> one side of the mm -hmm. vehicle is connected to the parachute. And then it has an automatic system that realigns it, so it's connected on two sides. All of that is really jerky from what so you're folks be, like, have heard. Yeah, yeah. That's what we've heard you're in your in your straps a little bit yeah. like that. And yeah. then of course the soft landing. Yes, very soft. <laughs> very soft <Yucky> landing. landing. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you get a, like do you brace yourself? Do they tell you you need to brace yourself for the landing, or is there a warning or a, something that? It, it actually says Pasadka, which is landing a couple seconds before landing. So mm -hmm. the computer sort of knows, but it's not at landing. It, mm -hmm. it has a uh, like a height. Um, uh, sensor that sends that light off and so so you so you know and you don't want to have your tongue between your teeth at that point in time for That's example <laughs> that would be bad <laughs> Blah. and you also want to just sort of be ready they we've got a <laughs> it's sort of funny we have a little stick in the Soyuz, just like you know like an airplane so, yeah. sort of and it has a transmit button so the main purpose is so you can communicate and you can make calls and stuff like that okay. but the second purpose is it's like the oh, oh god stick and yeah. so like when you're landing you hold on to it just yeah. so you have something to do with your hands that's good, yeah. you're just like ah you're coming. Yeah. <laughs> you're coming. you don't want to grab your commander yeah. and okay. squeeze them <laughs> <laughs> you have that little thing you're flying on a on a on a russian ship i mean do you do you notice that difference do you or do you feel like ah we're all one big team this or i mean what's the I'm curious. What is the what is the feeling that you have if you well, about about that? We're speaking in Russian, so that's a big difference. You know, yeah. uh, you you know, you definitely know yeah. you're on a Russian vehicle, and just the way the Russians do things, it's uh, you know, it's fairly simplistic, but it's very reliable, and mm -hmm. I think it's uh, you know, a little bit different. You know, shuttle is very complex, and mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's it's weird. You know, having to go, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, train in Russia, and you know, go out there and then launch from Kazakhstan. It's a uh, you know, a lot different than launching from Florida and just the whole yeah. mentality of it and you know we don't have that capability to do it now and uh, you know but it isn't it's an international program and so I think it's great that we're working together and you know if we talk about doing greater things in the future we're gonna have to work together so I think this is really a, a pretty neat transition going from where you have these two separate entities that you know have been working in space and now you're you're kinda getting together to actually get into space and I think it's it's, it's good for what we might do in the future and I think the Russians are pretty respectful for all the countries and the, the partners that are there. We do a, a flag raising ceremony 
while we're in Kazakhstan. And actually, uh, we always raise a Kazakh flag also because we're in Kazakhstan. But we raised an American flag mm -hmm. um, right before launch. Aki raised the Japanese flag. And so they're, they're absolutely respectful for the other countries that are there and participating. And so that's pretty good. But like Joe said, yeah, we are, we are launching on a Russian rocket. And in, in a Russian spacecraft, that's going to be our lifeboat while we're up there. So uh, there's there's a lot to be learned from that. When I when I was thinking about doing this, one of the reasons I want to do I wanted to fly into Soyuz is because we're probably going to go back to some types of capsule vehicle, and we've only flown in the shuttle, our generation of folks. And I thought, wow, that would be a good experience to see what a capsule vehicle is like un landing under a parachute, and take some of that stuff that you know the historic stuff and they. The knowledge that you get from the Russian program, and hopefully carry that over to our next vehicle in the in the U.S. So I hope I hope we'll build another vehicle that will be a capsule, maybe a lot different from the Soyuz, but at least we get the experience from from the two different programs. I think it's important.